I think he tried to interview a couple of them first up and they weren't really talking to him. So then I think he thought he had to do more set up, but um, didn't really play out that that way, I suppose, uh, because by the time he'd ended up finishing his question, they were all being pulled off to like a more sig- significant interview, like the TV broadcasters, the radio broadcasters, <laughs> or actually celebrating the trophies uh, being lifted. But yeah, um, f- fair point. Uh about that but um yeah even if they didn't those stories didn't get you the one that in the end made me break from just being emotional to being crying was uh and this was not at the game this was watching it back on tv later on was with dan sargentson i mean cheers cheers for laughter for (laughs) for pulling sargentson (laughs) to one side uh incredibly um emotional obviously you know from personal experience of losing a sibling as well and stuff like that but um what a, what a tough bloke and what a great performance and it, you just think about all these moments that these guys have had Manfredi coming back into the side um, then having to play games um, you know he had to play a game against Castleford last week Castleford was the team that he did his injury against um, he all that time out as well and then Sargentson playing just a couple of days after his, his brother had passed away and uh, to be honest excelling for the back yeah. end of the season, his best run in a Wigan shirt, probably other than his fullback performances in 2016, um, and and then you know the Tompkins, Bateman, Sutton, Wayne, Bitkin, Pete, all of the you know the cast of characters that are leaving the club. So much emotion. How do you think? Do you think? No, nah, that, that was a preview question, really, after, about whether Wigan were going to manage it, and they obviously did, didn't they? It was just. They, they bottled it up in the right direction, obviously. Yeah, I mean, they, they turned it on at the right time, didn't they? They used that to their advantage. It'd been very easy for that emotion to crush you and just be, be the weight of it to just be playing on your mind more than the performance in front of them. But the same way they, they did every defensive set where they just took it one set at a time and just defended that set and worried about where the ball was at that time, didn't worry about how they were going to get the ball back, what they were going to do with it. They just defend. I think that that mindset where they just took it again and again and again, and just kept doing it. That was what got them through. Yeah, I mean, I've I've covered all my points that I wanted to cover. So um, I don't know if either of you uh, had anything else you wanted to talk about from the game or your experience at Old Trafford, Alan first. There was there was just one thing that um, <clears throat> you talk about it in the in the stats, and I'm glad it was borne out. So as I said, I was surrounded by Wigan fans. There was one guy uh, next to me particularly, and he, he seemed to have this kind of um, Nostradamus um, ability to kind of say, "Oh God, we better not give a penalty away now." And literally, like the next set, they'd, they'd you know they'd, they'd hold <laughs> down or, or whatever. And it, it, it was like I don't know why he didn't shut up. Because <laughs> it seemed like every time he was saying, "Oh, it's really crucial. We better not give a penalty away." They, they seemed to blow up for it. So that, that that just made me chuckle to myself. That's all. <laughs> Tim, did you have anything else? Um, no, I think I've mentioned everything pretty much. The only other thing, which is sort of thing around around the the game, was I don't know if you you had the same in the toilets in your end, but did you have eye contact toilets? Eye, eye contact yes. urinals. Yeah, you do have them. It was yeah. very. Very off-putting. It was oh, no. <laughs> very I, I, missed, I missed out on that one. <laughs> so you were, they were they were halfway they were sort of halfway up, but they enough they were quite high up. So you had to be above probably about probably had to be above six foot to be able to see yeah. over them. Yeah, but you had it in, enough so you could you could have eye contact with the the person opposite you. You could see the was, bit, you could see the butcher, but you couldn't see his cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> quite quite and it was it was very very strange for me it was a a unique experience but yeah i mean it was it it was uh, it was it was good rather than that i mean yeah that's 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 really everything um okay well then the stats then uh for the teams a close game was reflected in close stats wire made 96 more meters although they had more ball and um the teams had an almost identical average gain both four, both sides also made four clean breaks. Whilst Warrington ended up making three more errors, Wigan conceded three more penalties. Ultimately, though, Wigan with three tries to one executed better when it mattered most. That's, that's the key. Dif- that's the key stat in all games, uh, and it was the key here. 
individually Don Manfredi two tries six tackle bus 124 metres two clean breaks and that was with him off the pitch getting stitched up for 10 minutes uh, Tom Davies with a try and 143 metres um, he described it as the greatest moment of his life so um, so he is obviously hugely buzzing after that one and what a season he's had and backing it up with 143 metres which he might be slightly disappointed with because it's, it's a bit down on his average um, <laughs> Right. Yeah, they were crucial. They were crucial meters, weren't they? Yeah, especially the um, the run, the run just before the Manfredi try uh, in the second half. He he made a a run that kind of got the Warrington defence a bit on the back foot. Which then there was the set up play to the right, and then the switch back play from O'Loughlin. But by yeah. that point, I think the defenders were kind of chasing the tails a little bit, which made it a little bit easier to get that set up play. And it was you know Tomkins to uh, sorry O'Loughlin to Lulawai to Tomkins out to Manfredi. So three key playmakers um, for Wigan there. So, and uh, it turns out Lula is the only one that we're aware is going to be at the club next year because um, Tompkins definitely won't be. And uh, there's talk from some quarters about O'Loughlin, but I'm, I'm, we're not going to dwell on that. Um, Ryan Sutton, in his last game in Cherry and White, worked really hard, 43 tackles and 124 metres. John Bateman, 164 metres. So that, that kind of brought out what you said about his relentless engine. Tim, uh, for the losing Warrington side, there were there were some good performers in there, um, even though they didn't get the the rewards at the at the top end of the pitch. But Steph Ratchford with one try assist, five tackle bus, 173 meters and two clean breaks. Tom Lynham with five tackle bus and 145 meters. Chris Hill, 12 marker tackles and 171 meters. So did his best as the captain there. Um, and then Daryl Clark. 48. And, and let's let's give some credit to Chris Hill. Didn't do any grubby shit this time. No grubby. No, that's a fair shout. Uh, Daryl Clark, 48 tackles, 9 tackle bus, 136 metres. So, um, yeah, some, some strong performers. In terms of the prediction, Super Brew and Dream Team updates, we'll, <laughs> I, I went 3 out of 3, which is a bit of a spoiler to, if, to anyone who remembers what we predicted last week for the other results to come. I end up on 146 out of 203 this year, so that's like, what, um, 70%? It's not bad. Uh, and uh, you guys ended up with 141 after a two out of three performance from, from Tim for last week. So actually pretty close when, when it comes down to it. And I remember lots of weeks where we did not pick the same the no. same uh, teams as well. So remarkable they came out so close. Uh, in the Super Brew, John Bennett takes the title. So get in touch, John, if you want to have an SLP t-shirt because we will send one to you. Alan Bagley takes the title in the Dream Team. We've, we've kind of, the writing's been on the wall for that since about week five or week six of the season. <laughs> so uh, so well done to him for, for staying the course like St. Helens couldn't. Um, it's a booby prize for Alan who is a Warrington fan. So, um, so, so Alan that's, that's uh, will be getting a Wigan shirt uh, sorry not Wigan a Super League pod shirt so that's, um, <laughs> Wigan shirt would have been a bit bit, bit rude wouldn't it at this stage um, Super League pod shirt sent to him uh, it should be on its way to him as we speak so uh, well done to those two for winning those competitions we will now move on to other results from around the world of Rugby League Other results time now, sponsored by jkmartwork.com. Check out jkmartwork.com where you can buy prints, canvases and more of James's stadium paintings. All UK Super League clubs are covered and a couple of clubs from outside Super League too, as well as football stadiums, cricket grounds and more. JKM Artwork can help you find the the perfect gift for the sports fan in your life. And uh, there's a few other results to to cover. Two two major ones um, before we get to... The minor results, which includes a, an international game from, from the top level, <laughs> but, but we're going to start with a, a, an, a, an event that we were all at and and we all enjoyed. But we'll talk a little bit about the first game, the Lee Miners versus Stanley game, in the other other results part. But we're going to start for this section with the Women's Super League Grand Final. Um, it finished Leeds 16, Wigan. 18. We had some fan reviews in from this. Some people in attendance, one watching it on the stream. Um, Alan, do you want to give us the first of the uh, the first of the fan reviews? Yeah, and I completely agree with this one. By the way, before I even read I it, so Carsten says, <laughs> "Rest full on." What did the ref think as he blew the penalty? 
offside. He ignored it for 92 minutes. 92 minutes. This game was... <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what the live clock said. Yeah, that um, was this game... on, on the hour league app. They just had a running clock and it, and it was 92 when that happened. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, this game was definitely decided by the man in the middle. And refs fell off. Wigan were deserved winners, but Leeds were always there. You couldn't hope for more in a grand final. Brilliant display by both sides. Um, I just need to call something out before we move on to Rob's, uh, Alan. How, how come yeah. you were the last one to get back to to speaking after the break when your wife brought you up your your drink, whereas I had to go and get mine myself, and and so did Tim. So so really, I had to, you know, I had to turn the wash, undo the washing as well. You, well, at least you did it without knocking it over this time. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> so so you know. Anna, Anna wants a shout out basically is what we're saying Alan oh, fair enough yeah well no, she can deserve that but I needed a wee I'm really sorry <laughs> um, so you're still not really giving her a shout out there are you <laughs> uh, she, 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 gets, she gets enough attention honestly with a writing career she is funnier than any of us so uh, so yes she is that's I know, but I have to keep I have to keep knocking her down to make sure she don't get too <laughs> too big headed <laughs> <laughs> um, undermining undermining <laughs> do you want to take us through the next fan review uh, Tim yeah fatboy underscore Rob says both halves went with the wind Leeds looked dead and buried but battled back to 16 all with two minutes left Leeds were the only team I could see winning from there until they inexplicably gave Wigan a pen in front of the sticks for offside. This after both teams were offside the entire match without a peep from the ref. I was angry for a split second. Then I remembered it was Leeds. 24 hours. I'm still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Lee Whitnell said, good to catch up with the SLP family at this one. The win made it tough for both teams, but Wigan were worth their win. Um, yeah, the wind. Is that a good starting point for this game, Tim? Yeah, I think so, because it was horrible. Because I couldn't even pick which direction it was necessarily coming from. No, it was, it was... definitely coming from the... Um... Well, I don't know what the directions were on the, on the ground. It was definitely coming from sort of from the Etihad Stadium kind of end towards the railway end towards the tram line end definitely so it was against Leeds in the first half and against Wigan in the second half yeah yeah because there was that was... pass wasn't there that um is it Joni oh. the, the Wigan's number 10 through that was a quite a good you know looked like a good bulleted pass for the first two yeah, yards as, as, as per your description I didn't need I didn't need to know who she was from your description excellent description of her last week of um Big lass with uh, with good hands. Yeah, it was it was very apt. Yeah, seeing her in the flesh. And every kick that went in in that direction just kept running and running and running and running, didn't it? Across the yeah, there was one there was one for about fifty meters out <laughs> that went all the way out without any help or anything. It was just and there was a couple. I can't remember if it was in the game before or, or the final. Where was that one that that picked up speed as it was bouncing? <laughs> yeah. And it was incredible because it just—it was an end over end, and it just just tumbled like anything. It, it and stumbled about fifteen yards off the boot, did it? But then every bounce yeah. it just got faster and faster, and ended up in the uh, sort of in the seats behind the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and to to paint the picture as well, behind a running track as well. So you went all the way over the running track <laughs> all and the way in, into the like stand, the, uh, the bit for for the throwing events as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But what did you make of the of the game itself? I mean, the t- big talking point is that uh, penalty for, for an offside um, when no other penalty for offside was given all game apart from, I think, one not square penalty in the first half. But um, but up to that point, the, the 78 minutes of play, the 92 minutes on the clock, up to that point, what did you make of that? I thought it was a really interesting game. And Wigan were very dominant for probably 65 minutes of it mm. and then it was it was that from that kickoff was it was it a kickoff or drop out that then Beavers picked up the ball from from her own in goal so yeah we, we're going to have been putting the pressure on Leeds' line haven't they for, for a, a good chunk in the second half and um and actually, the first half, Wigan kept kicking it dead, but the wind was a factor in that, I thought. But in the second half, Wigan's short kicking game was much better. They fought a couple of dropouts, uh, things like that. But this one kick from Gemma Walsh 
was just a bit overcooked and um and then Caitlin Beavers took the ball for a, for a quick tap on the twenty and basically tap, yeah, went eighty like, meters yeah. under the sticks. Yeah, and just and just burst through straight up the middle, and I had a look round because there's no one with me, but there's a nice big hole in front of me. I'm off. Pinned her ears back and off, off she went, and she was under the sticks before you knew it. She was rapid. Yeah, and from really, Leeds try, really quick. From Leeds is trying about the what third or fourth minute of the game when my yeah. prediction about Wigan's goal line defence was was usurped.